Let's take a look at timecode on the MixPre 10T, which is a little bit different than the MixPre 3 and the MixPre 6. First of all, I'm going to assume you understand the basics of how timecode works, and in particular, how free run timecode works, which is what we're going to demonstrate here. Now, if you are going to have the MixPre 10T attached to your camera, and your camera sends timecode via HDMI, you can send timecode from the camera to the MixPre using an HDMI cable. It'll have to attach to your camera on the one side, and it will need a micro HDMI to attach to the MixPre 10T here. For instructions on how to get that all set up, please go and look at the other segment on timecode, which demonstrates how to do that on a MixPre 6, which is exactly the same on the MixPre 10T. If, on the other hand, you're going to do a more traditional timecode setup with external timecode generators, this is what we're going to cover next. First of all, all of the devices that we'll be recording, including the MixPre, and all of your cameras need a timecode generator. Now, as it turns out, the MixPre 10T has an inbuilt timecode generator, so you don't need an external one for the MixPre 10T. You just need an external one for each of your cameras. Now, of course, the idea is that all of the timecode generator clocks will be synced to one another, and one will be attached to each device. So there's one inside of the MixPre 10T, you're covered there, and then you'll have one of these for each of the cameras. In this case, we're going to use the MixPre 10T's internal timecode generator as the master clock. So what we want to do is sync all of the other timecode generators to the clock in the MixPre 10T. The very first thing we need to do is we need to set the frame rate of the project in the timecode generators and in the MixPre 10T. So for example, if we have a project where all of the cameras are going to be running at 23.976 frames per second, or 23.98, what we want to do is first of all come into the MixPre 10T, go to the timecode menu, and here we want to set our frame rate. In this case, 23976, 2398 are the same thing. We're going to go ahead and select that, and then we'll come back, and we're good on that front. You will also need to do the same thing with your timecode generators that will be external, that are attaching to your cameras. Those also need to have their frame rate set, and you'll need to refer to the manual for your device to see how to do that. The next thing I generally like to do is to set the timecode to the same time as now. So for example, this is just this doesn't have to be perfectly accurate, but this is just seeding the timecode clock, and then once we sync all of them up, they'll be on the exact same time. So for example, right now, and then all I have to do is tap set here, and we're good. So what that's done is if we come back out here, you can see now the time code, which is the clock that's counting up here, has now been seeded from that time we set. The reason I do that is that it's not critical that that be accurate, perfectly accurate. But what it does do is that every time we start a recording, it's going to stamp this time code value to the file and say, this is when we started. And the reason that's important is that if a, an editor or a director is going back through the footage and they need to find something that they were like, oh, I know we shot this right after dinner. We finished dinner at what time? Oh, I guess it was 5 p.m., so I need something that was shot, the first thing that was shot after 5 p.m. They can actually use that time code value to go and find it. So it's just a nice convenience for your post team. One of the first things you'll want to do in the time code menu is make sure that in time code mode, you're set to free run. You'll also want to make sure that the BNC in is set to time code and the BNC out is set to time code. You'll also want to make sure that the sync ref is set to internal. You can also set your user bits right here. And this is just a way to set individual values Talk to your production team if they want any sort of user bits set. If they don't know what you're talking about, I would just leave it at zero. <laughs> user bits are just a convenient way to identify perhaps which device you're talking about. So for example, you could have a unique set of user bits for each recording device, one for the mix pre, one for each of the cameras, and you would set those user bits in your time code generator as well. Not a big deal, not critical, doesn't have to be set up. It's just there if you'd like it. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to sync this external timecode generator, which we're going to attach to our camera, to the MixPre 10T's timecode clock. So how do we do that? All right, the first thing we do is we need to turn on our timecode generator and put it in the mode uh, so that it is ready to accept timecode. And you can see this is flashing red. That means it has not yet received timecode from an external source. So we have a cable here, and I'll attach this here. And you can see now it's saying, oh, there's a cable attached. I'm waiting for time code, but I haven't received it yet. So what we do is we take the other end here, and you will need to get the appropriate cable. So 
In this particular case, it's a 3.5 millimeter coming into the tentacle sink, time code generator, and a BNC connector on this side. BNC, of course, attaches to the MixPre 10T. We want to attach to the time code output port. Now, while we do that, watch this little red LED. When it has received time code and has jam synced itself to the time code generator in the MixPre 10T, it should turn green. So we'll attach this here. And there it is. Now it's green. That means, okay, we got time code from the MixPre 10T, and this one is now set to go. Now, if we wanted to be 100% sure and check that, what we can do is we can come into the time code menu here, and we can come into the jam menu. Now what we can do is take the BNC that's still attached to our time code generator and attach it to the time code in port. And what that does here is it sends time code now from this into the MixPre, and it allows us to compare the MixPre's clock to the external time code generator's clock, and you can see the difference here is exactly zero. That means they're perfectly in sync. BNC means that's the time code coming from the tentacle sync. Gen means that's the time inside the MixPre 10T's time code generator, and they are perfectly in sync. You can also see that they're all set to the same frame rate. So that's a good thing to do just to confirm you have everything set up correctly. Now all we need to do is detach this and go and attach our time code generator to the time code input on our camera, or if we don't have a time code input on our camera, to one of the audio inputs, and it will record an audio signal time code to that camera. Then, of course, in post, you would use your nonlinear editor to sync the two of them up by saying, use time code on these and on the video file and on the audio file, and it will sync them right up. Now, if you are recording audio time code from your time code generator into an audio input on your camera, you will need to use either Tentacle Sync Studio to read the audio time code and convert it to file time code, or DaVinci Resolve, which can also do that. We'll have another video down below that was an older demonstration of time code that goes into a little bit more depth and what that looks like in post. One other scenario that I will mention here quickly is if you have a time code generator like this, this is the Pulse from Time Code Systems. This is actually a wireless uh, master clock. What this does is it actually wirelessly resyncs all of the time code generators on a set every second or so. This is a great way to ensure that your time code generators don't sort of drift out of sync from each other because this one is constantly resyncing all of them wirelessly. Now, if you're going to do something like that, what you need to do is make this the master clock instead of this the master clock. And the way you do that is you come in here to the time code menu, go to the second page, and in here where it says sync ref, instead of having that set to internal, you'll wanna change that to BNC in. Then what you'll do is you'll run time code from here out of this port into a BNC on the bottom, which is a time code input on the mix pre. That way, this pulse becomes the master clock, and this just follows what the master clock tells it. So that is one thing to keep in mind as well. So overall, there's an overview of time code on the mix pre 10T.